Hi, and welcome to another repaint video. I've revisited one of my teenage movie traumas for this one, and it was pretty painful to edit, but it was fun making Sadako from The Ring. She is created as part of the collaboration, including the three amazing doll artists, Telly Dollies, Doll Dreams, and GM Art. Make sure to head over to their videos. Their dolls are insanely detailed and well-made, and I am so honored to be part of this collaboration. I chose Sadako because I wanted to create her for the longest time, and she's just one of those scary characters stuck in my mind. I watched Ring when I turned 18 and I have a vague memory of screaming and, very platonically if I may add, crawling into my friend's lap. Also there is something about how the Japanese use sound and not so much music in movies that fits so well with the horror themes, you're never really prepared for the jump scares. Oh well, I'm not a fan of horror, I'm a scaredy cat and prefer comedies. I'm not saying no to Cabin in the Woods and Tucker and Dale vs Evil though, those are hilarious. Alright, so let's dive in. I used Jaculara for this doll, unfortunately her hip joints were in bad shape, so I had to fix that. It's a pretty simple procedure, thankfully. But first I took the head off by heating it with a blow dryer, then I pull it off. Phew, no broken neck peg. This will look weird, but fixing the joints start with dripping super glue into them, then you move the joints around while it dries, and it worked well on this one. Some dolls have elastic bands, and you have to change the elastic on those. While I was working on the body, I decided to chop it into pieces, but my Dremel gave up pretty quickly, so I had to charge it, so this is the next day. It's been a while since I modified a body like this. I wanted to make the torso detachable to pose inside the well and crawl out of the TV. We will get to that. After cutting and sanding, I mix some two-part epoxy clay. This stuff is magic. I love sculpting with epoxy. It takes 24 hours to cure, which was fine since I worked on four different things simultaneously. I fill the holes with hot glue before smooshing the clay onto it, using a plastic sheet to create a flat surface. After curing 24 hours, I take the plastic off and trim the edges to make it, you know, better. I want as little of a seam as possible. Then I carve out holes for the two tiny magnets. I love working with magnets, it's such an awesome feature, you can create cool things with them. I painted the second magnet red to measure where to put the second hole and it worked like a charm. Creating a paper template would have also worked. Then I carved adding a little bit of glue and popped the magnet inside. Mixing the skin tone was a challenge, but I think it looked okay after a couple of layers, then the body parts are ready for more detailed painting. I primed with MSC before using a lot of blue, brown and black pastels to make it look dirty. Then I painted blue veins. Dracula's skin tone is very pink and I want her really pale, so I didn't use any red or pink pastels on neither body or face up. After some more pastels, I could confirm that yes, it looks awful and perfect, so let's move on to the head. As usual, I prepare the head by cutting the hair, scraping it out, cutting the head in the back and pulling the hair rests out. Before the face up, I cleaned the paint off with 100% acetone and sprayed the head with MSC. As mentioned, I didn't use any red or pink pastels on this one. I wanted her to look pale and sick, so I went in with yellow, blue, brown and black instead. The eyes get their shape, which is based on this horrifying picture. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> this image is stuck inside my mind. It still makes me feel super uncomfortable, so I didn't use it that much as a reference. Here's a bit of a speed painting, where I added more and more pastels to make her look awful. I drew quite a lot of blue veins basically on every layer. Then some more blue pastels on her forehead and lips before the next layer. I've never done a doll similar to this, so it was a challenge, even though this is one of the more simple horror characters. She's basically black hair, white dress, horrifying expression, and boom, you got Sadako. And uh, well, yeah, that's it, which I realized after making her and having only like five hours of footage to edit. I still like the process and I enjoy doing something different. It's just much more unsettling having her in my house than it is looking at her pictures. She is scary AF in her simplicity. Knowing this expression is behind the curtain of hair is much worse than actually seeing it, so uh, yeah, I've already packed her away actually. <laughs> It 
In the fourth and final layer, I use acrylics to make it come alive. My favorite brand so far, you know, it might change in the future, but I use the Army Painter acrylics as of the present day. I realized I messed up the left eye a little bit, so I fixed that behind camera, but this is pretty cool. It kind of looks just odd until you tilt the head and it's like... Before attaching the head, I make three incisions inside the neck hole and I cut the neck peg. I ordered doll hair that never came, so I ended up making yarn hair as long as possible, then I painted the scalp before gluing the hair. If I had glued hair on the entire surface, it would have been, you know, too thick, but by painting the scalp I can actually leave patches and it still looks really good. Yay! Scary! And unsettling. The clothes are in two parts. First, I made a really simple skirt using a waistband pattern and a rectangle that I gathered and sewed on. The spots you see are actually glue that was stuck on my iron and this was intentional. I wanted to make the clothes look worn and dirty and yeah, for further destruction I used brown pastels. Ah, perfection. Next is the top part. The pattern I used was a modified DG Requiem pattern. I made the sleeves wider and shorter and left the lower hem as it was. I want to say that I had a lot of time left in the end, but the first dress I made was mauled by my puppy the night before taking decent pictures. Which was a good thing, because the dress was a one piece, which didn't look good when only using the torso for the photos. Thankfully, I made the props before making the doll, so everything was fine. Anyway, I made a TV. It's one of those first attempt creations, so don't judge. It works. I mean, it, it didn't work like a TV, but as a photo prop, it's actually really cool. I made a base out of popsicles and dowels, then some cardboard pieces got glued onto the frame. This one was airbrushed with silver paint from the army painter. It made it look like, you know, brushed metal, which was cool. Then I gave it some more vents before making buttons out of those wood discs that comes with the cutter pin joint set. They also got airbrushed and painted. Finally, I used these brads. Is it called brads? Anyway, I attached them and had buttons that you can turn around on the TV. I printed a classic picture of the well and glued it inside. Of course, I should have edited the photo to make it look even better, but that's the thing about first attempts. You find a lot of things to improve. So, yeah. Finally, I covered it in cardboard and added some blood. There is no blood in the movie, which is super cool, but I was going free range here. Humor me. I had to cover up some ugly parts and I couldn't do it with glitter. Well, 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 let's make a well. I collected stones a couple of years ago at a nearby small beach and my son was so worried I'd take too many and the lake wouldn't have any left. He's so cute. I used my glue gun and attached them to an empty roll of adhesive tape. Then I painted, focusing on the spaces between the rocks. Directly after painting, I rubbed most of it off with a towel. I also added some stones inside, but I didn't cover it, so, you know, it won't show anyway. Next, I made a custom stand out of this broken cassette adapter I got from my previous car. I sanded off the text, airbrushed it to look better and added a handwritten label. I tried making it as similar as possible to the one in the movie, then I drilled a hole for the wire and bent it into a saddle shape as usual.
Finally, I used brown pastels to make the label look older, and there we go, a little handmade stand. One day in the future, I want to 3D print instead of using wires, but that has to wait. And uh, yeah, that was it. I realized I chose a very simple character, and it's not 100% according to the movies, but I love how unsettling she turned out in the end. She was standing behind me while painting the illustration, and I had to put her in a box, because it felt like she was staring at my back, so mission accomplished, I'd say. My next video will be another Monopoly repaint. I made the cannon, which is super pink and super awesome. I have to do the editing and everything. Looking forward to sharing that project. Then I'm working on the wheelbarrow, which is going to be cottagecore. The hype is real. I've never done anything like that either, I think. Anyway. I started with this and ended up with this. Creepy dolls are creepy. She is up on Etsy and uh, I sincerely hope someone wants her because I have a hard time having her in my house to be honest. Just knowing she's in the box it creeps me out. Help, help a customizer out here. <laughs> Please adopt her. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of this atrocity. Next will be cute and bubbly. Have a happy Halloween and uh, until next time. Bye!